Peace of the Lord. It's uh, out of season here. <laughs> I'm coming from a seminar on Costa Rica. Everybody came through Panama. No, I'm going through Miami. Oh, I'm the only one who came through Miami. <laughs> well, because I, I need a, I because I I brought with me a couple of security guards, <laughs> so I had to. I chose to go through Miami with this couple. Well, you're not going to go through Ma Panama, you so know. So that's the reason we are, why I'm here. But tomorrow I'm leaving. You can be sure of it. We're going to read. If you are able, uh, guess the book that I'm going to read. Nehemiah. Wow, it's amazing. Nehemiah chapter 7. Nehemiah is chapter 7, verse 1. Then it was when the wall was built and I had hung the doors, when the gatekeepers, the singers, and the Levites had been appointed, um, just the first verse. This is an interesting thing. I'm going to bring to you something new. Last week we were gathered and the ones who got to our meeting, they would open the Bible in the book of Nehemiah. That was last week. And he would tell us, this being would tell us this. Now you, you just start work on the field, but there's a lot more. So we're going to continue on the book of Nehemiah for a long time because there's a lot of things that we need to find out in the book of Nehemiah. When in the beginning of this year, the Lord has revealed that we should have, uh, we should study the book of Nehemiah. In fact, we had no idea of what the book of Nehemiah would, would be for us to understand. We all know that the book of Nehemiah is a historical book, it's an interesting story. Written by whom? I already told you, right? Who wrote Nehemiah? Who wrote Nehemiah? Ezra, right. So, so we, we thought about a story. However, we began to observe when the Lord gave a revelation, which was the starting point on the book of Nehemiah, which was a revelation the Lord gave. Very interesting. And at first, we had no idea of what would be that revelation and the revelation was the following in the beginning of the book the lord said it's time for restoration we thought time for restoration i thought the following oh of course the book on mi the work on mi in jerusalem was restored jerusalem was to reconstruct jerusalem we all know this from the history oh so the brethren or of Hallandel, they are also connected with us. Peace of the Lord. Very good. So the Lord gave a revelation that the time of restoration and reconstruction, why is that? So we began to go through the book and what would the Lord want to show to us regarding restoration? Why restoration? Okay, restoration of Jerusalem. But we began to understand that the Lord wanted to give us a line of understa doctrinary understanding. And that we began to understand only now. When the Lord was speaking about restoration, it was not simply restoration of Jerusalem, a city, or physical Jerusalem. But the Lord was speaking about the new Jerusalem. Because on the Old Testament, Jerusalem is an illustration of the, the church. 
So when the Lord brought us to the book of Nehemiah, the Lord was speaking about the restoration of the church. We start the church. Well, but we start the church. Until then, we went restoring the church. So every topic that we brought, the Lord would tell us, it's time for restoration. So when I said the gate of the fish, gate of the fish speak of restoration. So we need to restore this gate. How do we restore this gate? In what way? So what was restoration? So we began to see that what the Holy Spirit wanted was to restore the church. So the process of rest to restore Jerusalem starts in a very simple way, in a very intelligent way of Nehemiah, which was the beginning through what, how does the Lord begin to restore Jerusalem? It begins through through the through the walls, right? Why the walls? Because he knew that the enemies were around around them and the enemies were going to oppose to the reconstruction of Jerusalem. So the first thing that needed to be done was to restore the walls. Restore the walls. So the gate that would lead to the fount of the dragon and the, the gate they would go to the mount. So all the gates were restored. So there came a point in which I believe the restoration of the walls lasted 50, about a little more than 50 days, 52 days. So after they restored the walls, there was a uh, an action from the enemy to try and prevent. So they try to to prevent the construction placing someone inside of Jerusalem. So Sambalat and Tobias and Jerusalem, they made a plan. So we're going to put people from us inside there. So if we put someone of ours there to kill them, we'll prevent the work to continue. So it was a very strange plan. So we begin to understand that sometimes the enemy tried to enter in our, into our midst to cause difficulty. We need to always be vigilant because sometimes a brother entered into some difficulty and the enemy brought this difficulty to cause a problem to the church. So here the walls are ready. The rod the walls have been finished. So now what Nehemiah did, what look how interesting. When the walls were finished, what Nehemiah did here, here's the beginning of the chapter seven. He appoints three groups. Uh, it seems something that uh, just in random, but it's not random. So the walls are ready, they have been finished. Now we are going to edify the city. The city is not ready yet. So the people is very small, the houses are not being edified. But there is still the edification of the temple, which is more most important. So the walls. So we are going to work for the edification of the city. But while we are edifying the city, we need to place guards on the uh, gates and the walls. So we need to be vigilant. So he chooses three groups that are uh, appointed here. They are the guard, uh, guards for the gates, Levites and singers. This is very strange, right? Putting singers to, to guard, put this group to a guard, they are not going to guard anything. How are you going to guard anything? You're know, playing there, right? All the time near the gate. But pay attention. What is uh, the dormant? Dormant in Brazil? I, I believe here is the same thing. What is a doorman? It's a person that takes care of the gate, the door. The door. So he's speaking about dormant to take care to take care of the 
the door. So the walls are ready, the city needs to be rebuilt, but now the doormen need to take care of the doors. The, the, how important is this, this point regarding in doctrine? I'm going to open a parenthesis here for you. I'm going to go back. If I don't forget where I was, you remi remind me. I'm getting old. I start to forget stuff. So, last week, we weren't... Actually, they invited themselves. The, to the largest church in regarding media in Brazil, the largest uh, that has a, a net TV network, the second largest TV channel in Brazil. The, the director, the, the president, scheduled a meeting with us. JDT didn't go because JDT was a little bit hesitant, so they scheduled me, to, uh, they appointed me to go and I went. So the idea was to hear what they wanted. And the conversation was uh, the following. We are building an, or an organization uh, in, uh, on a world level called uh, un Single Church. We are going to unite with you and another large group because we have church abroad and we also have. So we are going to go uh, TV channel is good. This is very good. So I kept listening, and he looked at me and said, "The president said we need to think that the pastors look what he said. I don't want to criticize anyone. I'm just mentioning a situation so that you understand how much careful we need to be. They are our brethren. We're not saying that one are not our brothers. They are, but we need to unite." Because the pastors from Europe, they met with us and they made this following statement. He said that Brazil today walks in long strides to become a, a major evangelical majority, a majority, evangelical majority in Brazil. The state of the Spirit of Santo in Brazil is the state with most evangelical. Brazil, 40% of the population is evangelical, it's more than Amapá, another state, and within 20 years will be, without a doubt, evangelicals are going to be majority in Brazil. So we kept listening, and the pastors from Europe, they met with us and said, Pastor, what is this in Brazil? You grow in such an amazing way, the gospel grows. But the poverty does not go down, and I kept listening. The misery continues. People are ever more poor, more miserable, the violence. And they question this situation, degrading situ this degrading situation in Brazil. So I started getting just like a, a tickle. I, I went there just to listen. To, so I ended up saying, Bishop, you forgive me. I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, of course. They are very polite. Oh, you can say. And then I said, we had a seminar in London. There was a group of pastors from Europe. And a pastor from a large church, evangelical church in London. And this pastor, he called me together with another pastor to have uh, a dinner with him. And we went to his house to have a dinner. His wife was very quiet. They began to talk and he said, they said to us, they showed the entire structure of his temple, the adja adjacent rooms, the structure is very beautiful. And he sat at the table and began to cry. And he said, we had two children. My oldest um, committed suicide. And my youngest is in a, is in a clinic for recovery 
of drug addicts. So you, you have you seen my structure? I don't have Christians. I don't have a single Christian. Sometimes I, I feel like I want to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. So what I do, I call, I call a couple of brethren, people that like to help, so we'll make a big soup Sunday night. So we invite the, the street dwellers, the one, the homeless, but I cannot give them the soup before the service because then they will leave. Then I tell them, you're going to eat the soup only after you watch the service. And then they watch and they give them the soup. So that's when I'm able to preach the gospel. Did you know that? But there is more. I went to Lithuania and met a group of pastors from Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and they sat with us. And they said, please help us. Because the average age in our churches is 60 years of age. We have no youth. The children become adolescents and the youth, they just go away. They vanish. They never go back to the church. I have dozens of temples that are closed. And they kept listening. So then I went to Germany. The Institute of Research in Germany said that in 2017, 400,000 evangelicals in Germany denied their faith. They gave up uh, of the gospel. In 2018, in Germany, 600,000 more, they do not call themselves evangelicals anymore. Where is the crisis, Bishop? It is here in Brazil. We are the Church of Laodicea. It's Christianity that is out there, like the European. I'm rich. They don't know what is, what is misery, be, being blind or naked. That's what is happening. Then he said, yes, you're right. But we used those things, the prosperity, uh, as like a bait. If we don't say that, they don't come. No, people don't need to come in this way. The Bible says that when they are being, when he was risen on the on the cross, uh, we will attract them. So Jesus is the one who does it. My brethren, when I spoke, you speak about restoration, we're not criticize anyone. We need to look at us and see what is around us. Christianity is in crisis. Christianity is divorced from the Bible. People are preaching prosperity, healing, and they're forgetting about the prophecies of what is here, which is most the most precious. Who is the doorman? Doorman is the one to take care of the door. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the door. Who is, who is Jesus? Jesus is the project and the doctrine. At this hour, we need to be paying attention to the doctrine. We are in time of reconstruction. You see doctrine, because in fact, what the enemy wants to do today is to go straight from the doctrine in our fight today in the Sunday schools with the doctrine. We've had last month a seminar in Israel. I forgot the name of the city, but it's a city near Gaza. Gaza if you have an idea, we had to do the seminar in a bunker. Uh, in the basement, uh, the bomber will, will hit you. It's, it's actually a bunker. During our seminar, 650 missiles fell on, this, on the city. All of them were destroyed by, by the system, the a shield, the patriot, patriot system. One, all of them, they were destroyed in the air, but they were the TV said that there were 650. The TV said that 650, if one of them fell on us, it would, make a, it would have made a big damage. But the same I was there, the group was there, and their concern was that we need this, we need, we need to see Jesus in this way. 
how interesting it is. It's doctors. And now we went to Costa Rica. There's a group, a group of pastors. What are we going to do from this day forward? We want there. We want there. So we went there. That's why I make fun with the people in our church. They, they danced. I was afraid that our group would dance as well. <laughs> And yeah, they were very, they were, it was very exciting. And then they played a rock and roll there, they had the rock and roll, they shouted and danced, and they kept looking to one another, the pastor there. They even tried to, uh, they bobbed their heads. <laughs> but I tell the pastors with great love, saying, they're servants of God. Of course, they're servants of God, they're men of God. They preach the gospel, but they don't know a reality. Then I told to a few pastors, my beloved, we sat down with two or three, and I said, this is it's all right, but this will not lead anywhere. It will not lead anywhere. Why? Because what is in crisis today in Christianity is faith. Faith is in crisis. Why? Because people try to achieve faith through reason. It's impossible to achieve faith through reason. Faith is to grace. If there is no operation of the Holy Spirit, there is no faith. People are curious, they are excited, they go there to uh, uh, have fun, to relieve their attention. Of course, it, it works out. It's good for you. It's scientific. You know that? It's scientific. When you, you Pick up an 80 year old man, tell him to walk for 40 minutes, he will be very tired. If you put him to dance, he will dance all night. Why is that? Because this is the end of things, it's scientific. Study it. It's a science. If you put a person to, <laughs> to sing, they sing until they, they burst. But the great question is asked is, what is the purpose of this regarding the gospel, regarding life and transformation, salvation, and being delivered from sin? This doesn't happen. So the first thing, the, the walls are reconstructed. Then you put the doorman. We need to zeal for the doctrine that is not ours. The doctrine doesn't belong to the church. The doctrine is of the Holy Spirit. They asked to us, when Costa Rica came, we put the antenna to receive the Sunday school? Of course you can. A group of churches in, in Spiritual Center, independent church. There are many independent churches in, in Spiritual Center. Assembly of uh, something else, Church of the New, uh, Boor, new Birth. And they are independent church. They are all guided by an association, association of the Pentecostal Church. And the directors of this association, they they looked for us and said, can we put the antennas in our church that are independent and pick up the, your Sunday school? Because we don't have Bible studies like this. And we said, of course, what is the problem? Oh, no, no, but only we are going to heaven. All the other are going to the purgatory. No, of course not. The doctrine belongs to the Holy Spirit. What we are doing at this moment is to zeal for the doctrine. We need to zeal for the doctrine. We need to zeal for the doctrine. No one has it. No one has it. They are preaching all sorts of things. They have ideas, but will not lead anywhere. They, we need dormant. So then the Levite, who are the Levite? Levite, it was a tribe, that's where the priests came from. What is our concern today is with the ministry. And I said last week, a group of teachers from a municipal uh, school, they asked uh, a meeting for our church. They wanted to meet Maranatha Church. And I went there. I was uh, invited to give a little bit of the history. And when I said and in the beginning, came uh, in my mother's lap. <laughs> so people don't calculate my age. <laughs> so he's 50 years old. 
So the meeting began. I began to speak about our history, and I spoke for a while. So we spoke of our experience. People asked me about tithing and offerings. Why? How come you don't speak about it? But you have such a large structure. You have today uh, 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 radio station. We have a couple of radios, FM radio, one in Minas and Northeast. How come you, you are able to do this? And I told them that our Christian is able to understand what he needs to do, but through the message. The message is delivered and the Holy Spirit works in their heart and a few of them feel the need of being tithers because it's in the Bible without us forcing them and and do anything of this sort. You know, they have their own experience and the Lord operates according to their God's faithfulness. And I said that one of our advantages is that we are not pastors there receive salary. Uh, a lady from a traditional church said, you're not receiving for this speech, for this study, you're not receiving to receive, uh, to give this study to us. Because in my church, everyone received every speech, even the pastor, if he is going to give a special study, he receives. And so then, no, oh, I don't receive. So then an individual stood up, understood what he, who he was. And he said, I would like to ask a question. And make uh, a mention of a Bible verse. Uh, the, the work is worth of his wage. He probably looked at me and thought, oh, he's a fool. Then I looked at him and said, yes. Depends on the... Uh, the Ex the meaning of the text as as and so depends on the as as of the text which in, which means I'm a doctor so he began to look at me with a different uh, understanding and he said I don't receive from the church but I consider myself paid because the blessing of the Lord enriches so then he got quiet Oh, but you have an answer to everything? I don't have an answer to everything. Doctrine. Well, I told him, we are not against the bread and the receive wages. No. We're not here saying that we are better. No, no. We are servants of God. There's nothing wrong with that. The Lord knows the situation of each one, but we have an experience. We have an experience. Of course, there are pastors here that dedicate to an, another type of work. And of course, they are, they receive wage. They work on the administrative area, but this is, that's not the case. The ministry for us is volunteer for what reason? Because it's not based on the letter. It's not an academic ministry. And Paul says that the Lord has called us to be ministers of a new covenant. And what is the new covenant? Bread and wine. Blood and body is operation of the Holy Spirit, not of the latter, because the latter kills, but the Spirit vivifies. That's all ministers and our experience. And that's what brought us to this place. What Nehemiah did? He opened up the gate and then they worked, put someone at the gate, and then they levite. And ministry is something very serious. Pastor Jesus says ministry is greater than life, and it is. The greatest anointing was of Jesus who dies on the cross. The anointing for us is not so that we are beautiful and famous. Our anointing is to serve and sometimes to suffer as well. That's anointing. It's the greatest of, was of Jesus, of course. So the walls are being rebuilt, of course. But we need to zeal for the doctrine. We need to be careful with the, doc the ministers who are important and the praise. Oh, okay. So the praise now. Why praises instrumentalists? Why? Look, I didn't s say this to the brethren there because it would be com complicated because they dance so much because they it would it become a scandal for them. But for you, are going to say, I received this a couple of days ago a video 
Whether pastor, the band began to, to play, and the puppet was pushed aside and went to, to the stage in the front. He began to sing and dance, and look, the guy danced so much. You know that singer that died, that, 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 that did the moonwalking? The pastor did. <laughs> the pastor knew. Uh, you know that singer that died uh, rock and roll he would step up do a step forward and another forward and he would move backwards he would walk like a crab <laughs> he stepped forward and walked backward the pastor did that there was a moment he gave a jump and split his legs a man has an, an amazing elasticity and I kept looking at it I kept looking at it This is an aggression to the service to God. It's an aggression. The adoration is an important moment. The Bible speaks of the angels that adore. Every instant, the God for the, His actions of justice. We need to be careful and respect with the praises. Because the Lord told us once that the praise is the expression of the redeemed soul. You understand? It's the expression of the redeemed soul. So when you hear some a few songs, the history of your songs here in America, for example, in the special moments, how many songs that you see the slaves that wrote amazing songs showing their moments and what they wanted, which was the promised land, which was salvation. Because here, there was no joy for them here. Here was only suffering, only death and suffering, and only desired the glory. So they sang that. So when you see a story like this, and when you see a song in this way, we need to seek this. The church needs to restore this. The church needs to bring this feeling of duration has gone away. Not because we are worried. No. We are actually afraid. Because the enemy is cunning and he can, he can enter in our midst. There was a cop in Brazil. He got ma they got married. Some, there's a wedding there. The poor pastor was there. The bride is the symbol of the church. He's going to go up and she had a, her smile. And he is the type of Jesus. They went to the, the reception. They had those dancing with people like. Uh, uh, yeah, with very few clothing. What was what happened in the service? What counted for a cursing for them because they made it was an adultery that they did. They ridicule the church when they do something like that. Everything that the pastor did, they, he, the, what the pastor said, comparing the wife with the bride with the church and him with Jesus, and then they ashamed the Lord during the reception. We need to restore this. We are not better than anyone, but we cannot allow Sambalai to enter in our, in our midst and cause this confusion. That's what we need to do. Our struggle is this. Because then what do we want? We need to do we need excitement in the church? Of course we sing, we rejoice, of course, but that's what it is. What Pastor Judy says, the shaking of the body rescues the soul. And that's what we see. So we begin to understand why the Lord has called us to read the book of Nehemiah and say, this is time of restoration. We need to go back to what the primitive church was. What happened to the primitive church? We are, we're not better than anyone, but the Christianity is, is in crisis. That's what I told the bishop there in that meeting. They are, that, they are dying. Actually, the majority is already dead. Now, they want to speak of uh, uh, material needs. This is the least. Jesus was poor and the majority of the disciples were fishermen. What is the problem with that? Oh, but you, you're here, you're migrating, you know, to have, fight for a better life. Nothing wrong with that. But now, are you working here for what purpose? Saving the Lord for what purpose? To 
to make more money, to become rich. It is possible that somebody may become rich. It's possible. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not a sin to become rich. And I tell them, it's not nothing wrong with become rich, but it's, it's, it's a sin to become rich with the gospel. To become rich with your business, with your work, nothing wrong with that. There's no problem with that. My brethren, the book of Nehemiah, you have a lot of things to see in the book of Nehemiah. But here, when he finishes the walls, we are in a phase, we can say, the walls have been finished. A couple of days ago, you have no idea of the number of pastors or pastors that left and now they want to go back. The majority wants to go back. It's a group that wants to go back. And you know what the Lord said? We put the, those names in, on, in the presence of the Lord and the Lord said, I don't want them in this, in my kingdom. It was not us. Oh, you're terrible, you're cruel, vengeful. No. If you ask, we, we just want to attend. Of course you can attend. You can sit on the bench, function. You want a little bit of English? Never. So, so if we, uh, no, it's not, it's not us. It's the Holy Spirit. That's why in Hebrew they said it's impossible. Those who want look in, in Nehemiah. Restoration, my brethren is a very important point for us. We are not against the brethren. We are, have open arms to receive anyone. We, we need to zeal for what the Holy Spirit has given us, for what the Holy Spirit has done with us. Our struggle, our difficulty, going back and forth, our sufferings. But we are living this moment, and the moment is very important. Uh, important moment of the kingdom of God. We've been seen here in Costa Rica in, in a couple of weeks. We're going to speak about Panama, but I cannot go back and forth. In three weeks in Panama, we're going to uh, consecrate the temple of uh, the uh, Manaim of Portugal, 15 minutes from the airport. When you, when you go to the airport, you see the beautiful sign that we acquired in Portugal. If you know Peter, Peter is a blessing. He bought there a property, the church in Madrid, but now he's buying in Paris. We need to pray for so that the Lord may conclude that purchase. And you guys are also purchasing a bunch of things, right? <laughs> My brethren, it is time for restoration. The dormant, the doctrine, the ministry, this, the praise, it is time for restoration. So there's a lot of things that we need to read, study in the book of Nehemiah. It's going to be a blessing for all of us. Amen. There were two spiritual gifts here. Let me see. I saw a lady. She is not doing well spiritually because she doesn't believe that God speaks and her incredulity has bothered her heart but she has fought against those thoughts it was brought to her a call uh, look you know how you overcome incredulity it's very simple it's not difficult oh I need my faith is shaken. There is only one, one way. I need faith. Oh Lord, I need. It doesn't matter. You cannot achieve it this way. Faith is through grace. And what is grace? Grace is the Holy Spirit. So how do you do this? You provoke, cause grace to happen in your life. And how do you do this? With through prayer early dawns, fasting, you begin to do this and allow the Holy Spirit to take care of the rest. 
don't need to use our own strength, spend the night uh, awake because you don't have faith. No, you don't have faith because you are a little bit empty of the Holy Spirit. If you allow the Holy Spirit to operate, the faith is restored, you know? It's very simple. Very well. I saw a lady that was bringing her arms a child that was dead. Is a lady that the work in her life has died. Work the Holy Spirit has died. She needs a miracle. She needs a miracle. What happened? I don't know what happened. He died. But the Lord can resurrect it. Amen. What are we going to see? Oh, Shepherd of Israel. Church, you stand up. I praise the Lord for your name, for everything that you have done in our midst, in the life of your people. Continue blessing us, Lord. In your name, we say the wonderful grace of, of Jesus and love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. 
and uh, where is Ronilu? And that new church that they are reforming there, who is going there? Uh, just a couple, the three, right? Everyone else is going to be here. <laughs> They're going to make a new construction. Everyone else has to be here. I'm going to leave the group here, and I that's uh, and allow it to grow. Amen. Why not? We need to let it grow. Nobody says anything. Everybody's quiet here. <laughs> a more word with Ramon, with the person that Ramon is going to have a harder time, cause that church to grow. It's, it's, everything is all right. The miracle will take place. Amen. That's what it is. A piece of the Lord to everyone.